Hey, what's up, my friend? Chris here from Mixdown Online. Now, I have two questions, two Cubase questions to answer in today's video. The first one goes like this. I have a question about Cubase installation. My C drive is overloaded. Do I have to install Cubase on my C drive or is it possible to install it on any hard drive? Let's check this out. So now let's jump into this. But before, if you're new here on the channel, feel free to subscribe to the channel to click the notification bell. And also, if you think that the video is helpful, please share and like. Okay, now, installing Windows on an external drive or you know another drive than the C drive. Now, I'm working on Windows 10. Um, you're gonna have to look it up if you're working on Mac, uh, but what I'm gonna show you, part of the answer is gonna be uh, shown in Windows. Okay, so uh, first you can, you can uh, definitely install any program on a separate drive using Windows. Um, I usually don't, I usually install everything on my C drive, but everything that has to do with a sound library is gonna be stored on a, an external drive. Um, so let me show you first how you can install Cubase on a separate drive. First, on Windows, what you need to do is to go to the Start menu on the at the bottom left, and you click on Settings. That will open the Windows Settings window, and then uh, click on System and Storage. And down, you'll have the Change where new content is saved. And this is where you'll be able to select where you wanna install your new apps and programs on your computer. By default, it goes directly on the local C drive, uh, but you can, you, know, you can select any other drives that you want and install those programs and apps on that external drive. So the minute you're gonna do this in this window, by default, Windows will install all future apps on this new location. So this is how you can do it. Um, now, as far as uh, uh, sound bank goes. That will depend on the VST you're working with. But if we stick to Steinberg's products uh, like Cubase, um, what you can do if you go again down to the start menu at the bottom left, um, go down to Steinberg and we're going to look at the uh, library, Steinberg Library Manager. And this is gonna show me all Steinberg products that I have installed on my computer. Um, everything that comes with Halion, everything uh, for Groove Agent, Cubase, Patch Up, Retrolog, you know, and so on. And if I click on details on one of those uh, VSTs, it's gonna show me where the sound bank is stored. So for example, if, uh, let me find one that is on my C drive. Let's go to Cubase, okay, Blockbuster. Okay, let's uh, check this one out. This one is by default was installed on uh, directly on the C drive, which is okay. But let's say I wanna just, you know, move things around so I can free up space on my original C drive. I can select this one, for example, and click on move and choose another place on an external drive uh, to, uh, to move that on, you know, and that's it. So let's say I wanna move it here. I'm gonna click on select folder. And there you go, it's gonna take its time to move that entire 1.9 gig or so uh, directly to that new location. So next time you're gonna open up Cubase, that sound library is gonna load from the new location. So you can do this with all of uh, uh, everything you see within the uh, Steinberg Library Manager window. Very practical if you wanna move things around and free up some space off your C drive. And of course, the Steinberg Library Manager is also available on Mac. Okay, now let's go with the second question. Any suggestion on how to back up all Cubase projects to an external hard drive? I save the individual projects in a folder, but the audio files are in the default folder. I have to get those files also. Now to start with, I'm gonna answer the first part of that question and show you how I transfer a full project from one drive to another. It's very simple drag and drop, okay? So I just select the, the, the project I wanna move uh, from one drive to the other. I select it and let's go with this one. Let's say I wanna move it to the desktop. I'm just gonna drag it 
to the desktop and that's it. That's the only thing I'm gonna need to do and uh, this way Windows will copy the entire folder on this uh, new drive. But what's important here is not to only transfer a Cubase project file, okay? But because this is that file is going to be linked to an audio folder where all the the audio from uh, that Cubase project is going to be stored. Okay, so this is very very important, and this is a kind of a mistake that I see a lot of people doing um, is they focus a lot on that specific Cubase file and they forget about the audio folder. Uh, and sometimes what's going to happen, and this is going to answer your second question. Also, because if you put all of your Cubase files in one folder, back that folder up, it's not going to do anything because the minute you're going to open that folder in Cubase, you will have empty audio events because uh, Cubase won't be able to um, to link that project to its audio folder. So you're going to be stuck up with a bunch of missing files and you want to avoid that, of course. So you need to make sure that you back up the entire folder that includes the audio folder. I made a while back a, a video on file management with Cubase. So watch this video out if you have uh, any questions on how you can work your file management in Cubase. Um, in this video, I show you how I do it on my, uh, on my end. Um, so basically, what is very important is to have one folder per song, okay, and not only one folder per project. I have, of course, one uh, one folder per project, but within that folder, I will have several, um, you know, several folders that will be single songs, and each folder will have a Cubase project or several projects. Um, of the same song like this one, for example. I have like several Cubase projects um, that are basically mixed versions, okay? Uh, but it's all the same song and all the audio is stored right here. So uh, let me show you something here that is the common mistake that people will do. Uh, people will um, start a song using a project window and then they're gonna save as that song to another name uh, to work on the new song, and they're gonna forget that this new file is also linked to the same audio folder than the first song. So I have two songs here. I have song one and song two. Let's say there are both different songs, but both are linked to the same audio folder, okay? So if you wanna split those up so they can each have their own audio folder, this is what you need to do. And that might uh, gonna answer the second part of your question. Okay, I'm gonna go in Cubase and now I'm working on song one. Okay, so this is song one and I have a bunch of events in the project window. If I click on Control P, that will open up the pool and I'm gonna see all the audio um, that was recorded during that session, okay? And I see the location of those files. But that folder includes also audio files from song number two, which is not shown in the pool because it's from the other Cubase project, which is not necessarily related to this one in this case. So what I'm gonna do with the first song, I'm gonna make sure I split that up. So song one uh, will have its own audio folder. And at the same time, I'm gonna move that on a another hard drive. So I'm going to click on file, go down to backup project, and then I'm going to select a, uh, I'm going to select a space on a, another hard drive. So let's go to the desktop in this case, and uh, I'm going to click on new uh, Cubase project, which is a folder I created earlier. And then I'm going to create another folder, which is going to be called song one, which is the title of this song and double click, select folder, and then a project name song one, that's good. And I'm gonna make sure that I click on remove unused files. I talked about that before. Um, so click on remove unused files, click on okay. And now those files and that new project is gonna be moved to that new location. Now I'm gonna close that project. I'm gonna go to project number two, song two. And now I have like a different project, different, uh, different audio files, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna split that up. So let's do the same, click on backup project, and I'm gonna select the same location, the same new Cubase project location, but instead of using song one again, I'm gonna create another, uh, another um, folder, call that one uh, song two, select it, and there you go. I'm gonna do the same, remove unused files. 
and there you go. Now, if I look at song two from the new location and I click on the control P to get to the pool, and uh, now you'll see that those files are uh, on that new location. And while doing the backup, Cubase only transferred and copied over uh, all the audio that was present in the project window. So ev everything, all the audio from your project window, those are the, uh, the audio that got copied to the new location in that new audio folder. Okay, so if I go now to my desktop and um, click on new Cubase project, now I have song one and song two. I'm going to go to song one. Now I have all the audio related to that new song one project, a Cubase project. All uh, those audio are in that folder. And same for song two. Song two has its own audio folder, okay? Uh, so this is how I manage to completely separate those two projects into separate separated folder. So they each have their own folder and own audio folder. So if you have like a bunch of songs that are sharing the same audio folder, um, but different Cubase projects, that's the way you're going to be able to split them up to their own folder and own audio folder. Okay, so this is something very important to do if you want to keep things in order. So it might be a long process if you have a lot, but that's the way to do it. All right, so if you think that the video was helpful, please share and like, and also if you're new here, subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell. Until next time, stay safe and see you.